What's up guys, it's Alec Mac 111 and I hope you are as excited to see the title of this video as I am. I am back into it, I'm back into the HPA game. I have not had an HPA gun for three and a half or four years now, and so this is the first one that I have built in a while, and I am super excited to show you guys. Hopefully from first look at it, you guys are like, dang, that thing is gorgeous. Um, I did all the external building on this gun, but sure Shot Midget did all the internals. I do not know anything about internals, um, and he is a really good tech, so if you want and don't mind, uh, go down into my description and subscribe to him. He doesn't ever think I do anything for him, so I'm trying to help him out. He's, he just hit 3,000 subscribers, which is really cool, so go subscribe to his channel. Um, but now let's get into the gun. So I sold, I still have two AEGs. I love AEGs. Um, I love my system as well, but my sophomore year of college, I sold my last Polar Star that looked very similar-ish to this. It was a GMP build, did have a T-Rex rail system. I sold that in order to fund a system. I found a system for a really good deal, bought that system. It ended up having issues. It was a used system. It was old. It had problems, um, and I loved that and babied that for a while, and then I built two AEGs in my senior and then, or my junior and then senior year of college. And so I love building guns. I think it's super fun. I love putting together new guns and just seeing how they work and working with them and playing with them for a year or two and then selling them or keeping them. My two AEGs I've had for a long time. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start from the front and then go to the back and then we're going to do some shooting. I did some shooting at the beginning of the video. Um, hopefully you guys love that, but I'm going to get some more shooting at the end. Up front here is the Type 89 Flash Hider. So this is from a Tokyo Marie Type 89. It just looks super cool. Um, I think it's super unique. I got it like 10 years ago with a Tokyo Marie Type 89 that I traded for. It was actually a full metal Tokyo Marie gun, but it was only created so they could export it only. That's why I was able to do full metal. They couldn't sell it in the U.S., but they did sell it. Um, if you go on eBay, or I'll flash a picture right there. That's what it looks like. Um, but if you want to know, they're super expensive now. But I did keep the Flash Hider when I sold the gun because I really thought it was cool, and I gave him like a birdcage flash hider. So I have used it on pretty much all of my M4 builds since then, so you definitely recognize this. If you were around like five years ago when I had my last Polar Star, this is the look for it. I still have a lot of gameplay videos with that. Um, this is a Troy T-Rex rail system. This is in 13 inch and black. I thought about maybe switching and doing like a tan, but I really like the tan squid grips and how they work. So last time I only had actually one pack of the squid grips. I always get questions like, Alec Mac, what the heck is on the front of your gun? These are Troy squid grips, and I think they're literally probably the coolest thing that you can use on a rail system. I always get questions because they look so unique, um, but they fit into these Troy T-Rex holes, these grooves right here. Um, the alpha style rail is what the real one is. Um, but damn, this thing's like, man, <laughs> they're so, so cool. Anyway, I just absolutely love the feel of these grips. I think they look awesome. I bought two packs, so this is the first pack from here on, and then the second pack there. They're like 20 bucks a piece, so they're a little expensive, but they're super nice. And then, as always, I stuck with the BCM Vertical Foregrip about three or four years ago. I started running these, and I have not looked back. I love the angle on it. I love how you can kind of just lock your hand in that little groove right there, especially with the grips there. I oh, mean, it just feels so, so, so comfortable. So I've run this to pretty much every one of my guns. You guys will recognize this. One of the two accessories that I recommend more than anything else, you'll see the second one in a minute on the pistol grip. Um, I think it's usually funny. Two of the right accessories I recommend the most are both pistol grip style things or like grip things because I just think when you're shooting like if you have a good grip on a gun I know this is way more realistic like for realistic stuff if you can have a, a solid grip like I run the, I run a BCM grip on my real AR-15 on my Geisley rail um, but it is it is really nice so I want a Crytek base here I want the Crytek body I really like um, the Crytek builds I have had two GMPs and I love that and I had a, a GMP in the last one so I want to do something a little bit different the Crytek body is really high quality I love the lines and that this is the SPR Mark II was this base um, I wanted that length for the gun as well. But on the body, I love just the lines, the Crytek marking there, even the grooves right here, the, the training, uh, just like manufactured in Taiwan, training purposes. I just think it looks cool. I just was really excited to try something new with this. Um, I do have on the right side here, you can see that I have a retro arm selector switch. I love this. It is not ambi, um, as they don't work with ambi ones like the Crytek originally come with, but I didn't need that anyway. I'm a right-handed shooter, so I don't need um, that side that doesn't work with the Fusion Engine and the Crytek bodies. And so I got the black one. I think the black looks really good. I think it looks super sleek on that. I'll show you a little bit of close up if it's not already. So see, and then I also went with a Retro Arms Trigger. This is the J-Type. I went with gold. I have a gold one on my Stubby M4, the GMP Stubby M4. And I just love this J-Type Trigger. I think it feels so good. Like it just feels a little bit of like a dip at the bottom and kind of just like a really good edge. I don't know how to explain it unless you actually would feel it or something. But it feels really, really good, and I love those straight-ish style triggers a lot. All right, so in the engine, I actually am sticking with the, the stock hop-up and bucking and, and everything with that. I have not changed that. I will not change that until it starts shooting. I have shot it quite a bit, and it is like a little bit inconsistent. I think a 6.03 and a Pro Win potentially work, but then Pro Wins also have issues in Crytek batteries sometimes. 
Um, then if you'll go with like a Prometheus Bucking or Mad Bull Bucking, I haven't 100% decided. But I do have one of the EMG Fusion Ends here. This is a Gen 2 or Vision 3, so it's the newest version of the Fusion Engine. I went ahead and went with the Fusion Engine because I like that platform a lot. That was one of my old one. Um, and then I didn't want to shell out the money for an F2 um, at the time. I have a blue nozzle on here, so this is a blue nozzle. I was going to switch to a black. They originally, the e-bike ones, um, they originally come with a red one, but I could not. Like, it was shooting way too low PSI because it also has a banjo uh, version 2, S S2 banjo in it. And so I did, like, it was just not working well. I, had to, I have to shoot it at, like, 80 PSI or above. And with the red nozzle and the banjo and everything, it was it was just like really low. I was shooting at like 40, 50 psi to stay under chronos, to stay under 400 feet per second. As I have the shooting, a perfect 385, 390, which is really good for most fields in Ohio. We're not usually allowed to shoot over that, and I don't want this to be like a super DMR build. I just kind of want it to be like a normal rifle build, um, but also to get that range and use that from the HP because I love it. On the pistol grip here, I have this. So this is a PTS uh, style pistol grip. This is just the, their normal pistol grips. This is the newer version. I've had like three gens of them on all of my guns. I love the Michael PTS grips. And then over here on the on the grip itself, I have one of the tough one grips. I've shown these on my videos before. This is this, and then the BCM grip are two of the external just accessories that you can get for super cheap. I think these are like twenty two, and these are fifteen dollars. These are like a rubberized grip. Um, I'm actually sponsored by them. Um, they're a really great company. They're from Ohio. They're local. I know the owner. Um, they're an awesome, just awesome company. And if you use my my coupon code in the description, you guys get 10% off. I don't get any kickback from that. Um, but it is something I love their company. And I love their vision. And so tough one grips. They're just super comfy. Um, kind of like the squid grips, very similar texture to it. And I don't know, for some reason when I shoot, like I just really like to have, I know I wear like gloves too, but like just that rubberized texture, that kind of like no slip grip. I don't know if you guys really feel that. But for me, those are the two best accessories that I can get. And I just really, really like them and really, really, really want to use them in kind of everything I do. I have these on every single one of my guns that I use, and I have these on every single one of my guns too. So that's funny, um, but they just feel super good. Up next, we have uh, this here. So this is an Ant IGL. I got it in the America line. I actually ended up getting this, so this is the reason I have my plate carrier on, because I'm going to shoot it. Um, this is a like premium line, so it's different. I love the America line. I had those in my last one, and I thought about getting an America line, but I actually really think the premium look is really cool. It's like double braided, I think, is why it's premium. So it's a gold inner and then a black outer. I think it looks really cool, but I did kind of want to stick with those like roots that just just America, like God bless America. We're here, like America, like like bald eagles flying in, just 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 gun, just just the favorite thing i do have a dual sleep point here this comes with a cry attack i don't really care about it a ton it's okay on here up top this is actually something another like i guess this is another tip accessory wise these are the field sport red dots and then this is a utg i think it's like a half inch riser or three fourths of an inch riser i buy these red dots on ebay i think they're like 40 bucks for this whole package um i think i have three or four of them and i've used these for forever i've actually have the exact same one of these on my real ar-15 i put about 750 rounds through it and the sight is still fine. Sure shot midge is blown to through two or three after like 500 to 1,000 rounds, but it still holds zero too. So for airsoft, perfect sight. It's designed to be like used with a 22, um, but I put it on my 223 just because I thought it was fun and I was going to buy like a really expensive sight. So I will, I think, eventually when it breaks. But for now, I just kind of wanted to battle test it. And man, these things, like if I can put 750 rounds through my actual gun, it should still stand up to airsoft stuff pretty pretty well and it should hold a really good zero also it has 11 brightness settings it's only red but they're really 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 good and it's really in like even the brightest day you still see it really clearly which i really like and then batteries are pretty easily to get or easy accessible to get as well i've not put a different charging hand on here i thought about doing that but i think if you guys know anything like when i do these videos i kind of upgrade over time if that makes sense and there's a point all right no more plane but back to the stock so if you've been noticing this whole time yes I have Larry the Enticer on here. My friend Claire got me this sticker, and so I threw it on the stock. I was like, yo, there's what like perfect way to put a sticker that's hilarious right there. I put a Supreme sticker on my last build. I know I used to play a ton more Milsim and stuff, and I still do. Like, I still enjoy Milsim, but just playing open plays and, like, this is so cool. It's literally, like, a sticker, just him just sitting doing his thing. Like, I don't know, super funny. One of my favorite, like, YouTube videos, just memes of all time. And then I also went ahead and put some Velcro up here. I've seen people do this before, and I think I did it on one or two of my other guns, but I've heard like I've heard some people are like, oh, don't do that. Some people just put Velcro and then put patches on it. 
I actually really like it when I'm kind of sitting down on my rifle. Now, granted, I do use a mesh lower, so I feel it a little bit, but it just feels really comfy. Instead of putting your face down on, like, harder plastic, and sometimes when it's colder out, you put it on here, and it's just a little bit nicer. Like, um, it does kind of keep the dust sometimes, too. I'm not, so I'm curious, really curious how this is going to work kind of for, like, the next three years that I plan to have this gun or something. Um, but it does feel really comfortable, and I really like it. On that, so this, this is there, and then the stock I have, this is a Mission First Battle Link stock. I got this one. I've actually used the real one on my system. I have a real one that's on my system in the tan color. This is like the Dark Earth, and I think it matches the body of these really, really well. I was kind of impressed, to be honest. Um, it does have a really easy access point here, so I can store some stuff in here, so I can access my FCU right here. Um, I did Dremel a little bit of this. Just a second, I'll kind of show that. Um, I dremeled that so that the wires can fit through there, and then the battery just fits in there with that little foam piece, and I think that's really, really nice so it doesn't move, it doesn't shake or anything, and I can add the FCU battery in there. I just have to be careful if I'm taking it off, if I'm pulling the stock off, that I have to be careful with it, not to just pull any wires or anything. But I am super excited for this gun. I think it looks super good. Hopefully you guys think it looks super good too. Let me know if there's anything you would change on it. Um, let me know what you think of the gun. If you think it's cool, go ahead and comment like, yo, that's sick, bro. If you think it sucks, go ahead and tell me. I'm honestly okay with that. Everyone has different opinions for how their builds go, but I really love this. So let's get in and let's shoot a frick ton of rounds. All right, let's shoot it. So I'm going to get a few different angles to kind of just get a side angle for now. I have an entire high count full of rounds, so we're going to blast them. I'm just going to show you some semi-auto first. I think I lost a little bit of like my trigger finger because I think I used to be pretty fast, but I, I don't think I lost a ton of it. It's just going to be like takes a little time of shooting again. I can always go faster with like this, which it looks kind of dumb for airsoft, but it just showed like the capability of the gun. All right, sure shot midget gets to shoot it since he built it. So the specs on this are 385 FPS with a .2. It's about 85 PSI. And then it's about 1.55 to 1.6 duels with .3s. Um, I've got it set for 30 rounds a second. Decent rate of fire for outdoor use. You know, if somebody happens to not be calling their hits, <laughs> he'll just flip it to full auto and <laughs> don't call it. So let's go ahead and just shoot some semi real quick. Now, I can shoot much quicker than he can. That's semi-auto. But let's go ahead and flip it to full auto. Who couldn't pick it up? So, as far as efficiency, this thing is extremely efficient. It's got a red low flow poppet. It's got the S2 Lightning Banjo, um, which are just great for efficiency. It's got a blue nozzle in it, which is not so wide bore. It's like kind of right in between. Um, you could use those for outdoor or indoor. The reason why we're running the blue is because it's such a long barrel, so it's, it's picking up speed. So there's no reason to run a wider bore. Like if I were to run a 10-inch barrel, I run red nozzles normally. Hey, guys, I'm Alec Mack. So Sure Shot Midget 14 put together an HPA gun for me. It's a little quick for me, but here's a, here's a clip of it. Yeah, it's a little fast, guys. I think I'm going to hurt people. <laughs> <laughs>